Hello, welcome to the self-learning platform by Dr. Shishma Singh. Today we start Unit 11, Jeremy Bentham. Let us have introduction about the unit. Utilitarianism is essentially a British school of political theory. It consisted of a group of writers, politicians, administrators and social reformers. The most famous members of the group are Jeremy Bantham, James Mill, and John Stuart Mill. Their primary theoretical interest lay in conceiving a framework of political rules leading to a science of politics. In practice, they emphasized on the utmost necessity of legal and social reform and evolving efficient political institutions. Their impact in general and that of Bentham's own efforts at substantial reforms in particular drew substantial popular support. John Stuart Mill tribute to Bentham as the father of British innovation and as a great critical thinker was justified. Bentham not only wanted to reform the social and legal institutions of his day, but was also a strong supporter of democratic reform of universal suffrage, shorter annual parliaments and the sacred ballot. He was the founder of a group called the Philosophical Radicals, who influenced by the French Revolution and rejecting Burke's condemnation of it, advocated that social institutions should be judged by the principle of greatest happiness of the greatest number. Any social practice which did not advance this happiness should be reformed. Now let us discuss his life and times. Bentham was born in 1748 in England in the family of a wealthy and successful attorney. After an export education at Queen's College, 1760 to 63, Bentham began attending the London Law Courts in 1763. In those days, the only way for would be liars to learn about law was by attending court proceedings. It was Bentham's luck that formed some years ago. The University of Oxford had begun organizing a series of lectures on law by William Blackstone. Bentham attended these lectures in 1763 and when Blackstone published his lectures as the famous commentaries in 1765. Bentham caused quite a stir by writing an extremely critical commentary on a few paragraphs of his work. Once he began, Bentham never seemed to stop writing, although most of his writings were fragmentary. It was his friend, Etienne de Mount, a Genevian who organized his early writings into a book form and published them in translation in French as a theory of legislation in 1802. This work became available to Bentham's countrymen only when it had been translated back into English in the 1820 among the writings of the Bentham published originally in England are a fragment on government 1776, introduction 
to the principles of morals and legislation 1789 and the constitutional code 1830 the code was supposed to be his magnum opus and he had planned it as a three volume work but he was able to publish only the first volume of in his lifetime bentham was not so much a practicing lawyer as a legal reformer most of his work was written with the purpose of bringing about legal and political reform in britain he even went to russia as an advisor to catherine the great in 1785 and spent 3 years there back home in the 1790s he entered into a contract with the british government to undertake prison reform to design and build a structure called the penot pecon he an ideal prison extremely disappointed when this project fell through he turned to the reform of political institutions in 1809 he first met james mill who was to become his lifelong associate and together they set up in 1824 the westminster review a journal devoted to the philosophy of totalitarianism bentham died in 1832 while the struggle for parliamentary reform was on in england now we discuss utilitarian principles bentham became the first chapter of an introduction to the principles of morals and legislation thus nature has placed mankind under the governance of two sovereign masters pain and pleasure it is for them alone to point out what we ought to do as well as to determine what we shall do on the one hand the standard of right and wrong on the other the chain of causes and effects are fastened to their throne they govern us in all we do in all we say in all we think a man may pretend to abjure their empire but in reality he will re- remain subject to it all the while the principle of utility recognizes this subjection and assumes it for the foundation of that system the object of which is to rear the fabric of fallacy by the hands of reason of law for bentham utilitarianism was both a descriptive and normative theory it not only described how human beings act so as to maximize pleasure and minimize pain but it also prescribed or advocated such actions according to the principle of utility or the greatest happiness principle or the felicity principle the cause of all human action that which motivates human beings to act is a desire for pleasure utility or happiness is defined in term of pleasure a thing or action is useful if it brings about happiness that is pleasure by utility is meant that property in any object whereby it tends to produce benefit advantage pleasure good or happiness a person's interest also has the same content 
that of pleasure something is in the interest of a person when it tends to add to the sum total of his pleasures or diminish the sum total of his pains in the principles bantham listed 14 kinds of simple pleasures that move human beings including the pleasures of sense wealth skill power benevolence and malevolence diminishing pain also means more pleasure there are 12 kind of pain which individuals seek to avoid for instance the pain of the senses or of an ill name not only do individuals behave in this manner but they use the evaluative terms of good and bad to name those activities which bring them pleasure or pain now this is a position as old as hobbes what is new with bantham and his claim of utilitarianism being a moral theory is the advocacy of such action what brings about pleasure is morally good that what leads to the pain is evil and should be avoided human welfare can only be furthered if individuals maximize pleasure and minimize pain as early as 1776 in the preface to the fragment bentham had written it is the greatest happiness of the greatest number that is the measure of right and wrong what is so moral about an individual seeking his pleasure bentham's answer to the charge of utilitarianism being instead of a theory of morality a theory actually of selfish psychological hedonism is that utilitarianism does not purpose that one seek only one's own pleasure in deciding whether to act in a particular manner one has to be impartial between one's own pleasure and that of all those affected by that act if all happiness is either the happiness of the agent himself or the happiness of others then we can clearly show that utilitarianism is concerned with the happiness of others let us take the example of punishment if punishment is to have some utility and to have utility is to generate happiness then punishment is obviously not going to make the person who is being punished happy it will instead make others happy by making it less probable that the crime is committed again it is true that for bentham the community is a facetious entity nothing more than individual members constituting it the interest of the community then is the sum of the interest of the several members who compose it it remains true however that the interest of others are to count as much as the interest of oneself the context of one's action determines the circle of individuals affected by it for government officials all the members of their state are affected by their action so the government has to calculate the balance of pleasure and pain on a country wide scale a private individual has to consider only the pleasures and pains of those few directly affected by his action 
thus the government is concerned about the happiness or welfare of all its citizens and the individual is to think of the happiness of other person apart from himself that is then what makes utilitarianism a moral theory bentham identified four general motives for human action the purely social motive of benevolence moves only a few individuals such benevolent individuals pursue the happiness of others even at the cost of their own happiness an individual acting out of the semi social motive of love of reputation or praise pursue others happiness only when it promotes his own as well the majority of human kind act out of the social motive of self interest when one's own happiness is pursued taking care not to cause others pain but not pursuing their happiness either finally there are some individuals moved by this social motives who actually experience pleasure by harming others bentham also provided a calculus for determining the balance between the pleasure and pain from any action according to this philosophic calculus one must give a numerical value to the intensity duration certainty or uncertainty and propinquity or remoteness of the pleasure and pain of the persons affected by one's action and one must undertake the action only if the value of the pleasure is higher than the value of the pain one should also factor in the fecundity of the pleasure producing act as well as the purity and extent of the pleasure being produced in calculating pleasure and pain one must be careful to abstract both from the object which is the source of pleasure or pain as well as from the person whose pleasure pain is being calculated this means that the pleasures everyone is to count as one and the pleasure from the worthwhile activity like writing a history of egypt is not by definition of higher value than that from gambling with a desk of cards human beings seek happiness their own and that of others they ought to seek happiness their own and of others to seek however is one thing the question is how can they attain what they seek what is required in general for human beings to reach the happiness they are searching for human happiness for bentham depended on the services man rendered to each other government can ensure the services by creating a system of rights and obligations political society exists because government is necessary to compel individuals to render services to each other to increase their happiness this then is how bentham made the transition from his utilitarianism to his political philosophy here we want to wind up this lecture thank you so much for your attention